Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone here and uh, thank you for joining us. I'd like to begin and uh, open the meeting, uh, the Select Board slash Affordable Housing Trust on Monday, January 23rd, 2023, held here in the Walk White Meeting Room at the Mashpee Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashpee, Massachusetts, zip code 02649, broadcast live on cable channel 18, stream live on the Town of Mashpee website, uh, the time now 6.30, um, can we convene an open session? Uh, I'd like to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. If we could have a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, um, first matter of business. Um, the discussion and approval of amendment to the Affordable Housing Trust uh, Community Preservation Fund application for the May 2023 town meeting, um, a transfer of funds to the Affordable Housing Trust. Mr. Town Planner, Evan Lehrer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Kind of acting as a conduit of information tonight. Um, just to present a potential option to you, um, as noted in my memo in your packets, in your November 7th meeting, you voted to authorize an application to the Community Preservation Committee uh, requesting funding for up to $300,000 for affordable housing purposes. Uh, subsequent to the, your approval of that submission, a uh, local property owner uh, submitted an application to the Community Preservation Committee um, requesting uh, purchase of his property for, uh, for the town's acquisition, specifically for affordable housing uses. Um, the site is 40, excuse me, 31 Schumann Road, 474 Main Street. Um, I've looked at this site alongside the conservation agent uh, and feel that it is, does provide a reasonable, small, affordable housing opportunity on Main Street, which is advantageous. Could be a small 10-unit uh, 10 bedroom project. Um, and we think that it could be an interesting opportunity for a local developer to bring to fruition. But with that being said, there are some existing conditions on the site that make moving forward with a, a warrant article to town meeting at this time a little, um, uh, there are questions that, that remain that need to be answered before I think the CPC feels comfortable presenting a warrant article to town meeting. Notably, um, the property owner had uh, entered agreements to sell this property to two uh, prior purchasers, both who uh, went to the Mashpee Board of Health for PERC tests to ensure that they could site a septic, uh, septic system on site. Uh, and both uh, PERC tests showed um, contamination of logs, rocks, other fill and debris, generally construction and landscaping related about six to 10 feet down from the grade. I've looked at historic photos of the site and it has been historically cleared going back to about the 60s and is somewhat revegetated since. Um, given those existing conditions, uh, we feel it's important to conduct further analysis on the site, notably what's the scope and extent of that contamination uh, and is it just organic materials or some other contamination that the town would need to be concerned about if it were to pr uh, move forward with some sort of affordable housing opportunity. Evan, yes. can I just ask one question? Of course. Who would be responsible for clearing the lot? Would that be the owner now if it's not? I think ultimately when it comes down to a potential oh, acquisition, we would negotiate that. But I think what the town uh, should be considerate of, uh, again, if, if you were to assume a deed to this particular property, is what's the scope of the contamination? Because um, through an RFP process, the town is in a relatively unique position to uh, communicate the existing conditions to a potential developer, be a participant in the development of that site, and bring what uh, is uh, essentially a, a contaminated uh, site that is not as productive to the town to something that is a cleaned up and then pr uh, meeting a need. Uh, but we do need to understand the scope of that contamination so uh, cost could be assessed. When the town considered purchasing 12 <laughs> Cypress Circle a number of years ago, 
which has not been effectuated yet. Um, uh, we had submitted what we refer to as a request for uh, interest in the developing the site, and we received two responses back from developers. So what I had suggested to the uh, chair of the CPC is that the town alongside the DPW and the health department could um, dig a hole, take some soil samples, A, to determine that there's no uh, significant overly concerning contamination on the site that might require significant remediation. Um, and then to get a better understanding of the scope of the debris that's buried on the ground because then we're able to communicate that existing condition to a developer and have them reply whether or not there's a feasible project there through a request for um, interest. So once we have a little bit more information relative to the scope of that, uh, the, what's buried there, confirmation that there's no concerning uh, contamination beyond that, uh, and then an understanding from developers that they believe these a fe there's a feasible project here, then the trust could potentially be in a position to decide if this is advantageous moving forward. So the, the suggestion to potentially amend your application to the Community, community Preservation Committee is somewhat as an expression of support for that endeavor to do additional due diligence uh, and provide you with the capital that would be necessary to potentially execute uh, an acquisition of that property if you deem at the appropriate time that it would be advantageous to meet the Town of Mashpee's affordable housing goals. Yes, Mr. Cotton. So, so, Evan, a um, so couple things. Are you saying that it was under agreement and twice before and they pulled out? I mean, exactly, because the scope of that contamination is unknown at this time. So, two purchasers who did a little bit of their new due diligence to site a septic system, both found what's buried under the ground and decided there are other sites that would be more advantageous for them to consider. Uh, the property owner did indicate that he's received quotes to clean up the site, and that range, I think he said $75,000, but I have not seen those quotes, and I can't confirm or deny that that's the true extent of the contamination. Tom. Okay. So, <clears throat> the, um, I'm, I'm assuming just the, the word without saying it, you were dancing around with it, is the fact that there, there's wood or logs or things of that nature Correct. in the ground. You yes. know that for a fact. Yes. The contamination may be people changing their oil out of their vehicles, things of that nature? No, I don't think so. I, when I say contamination, I mean there is stuff buried under the ground that wasn't supposed to be put there. So that's the scope of the contamination I'm talking about. I don't believe there would be, because there's been no other land uses on the site other than uh, having been cleared and I think probably used as some sort of yard to store material. Um, so I, I don't think the contamination goes beyond rocks, wood logs, et cetera, but we want to confirm that that's the case. Fine, gotcha. Mr. Chairman? Yes. How much is that going to cost to do that study? <clears throat> On, well, a, soil, a simple soil study would be relatively inexpensive. We would take a sample and send that off to a lab. The Board of Health does this all the time. Um, a substantial survey of what's under the ground is something that we would hopefully want to understand enough to build it into an RFP so when it, during the development phase that gets cleaned up. Any other members of the trust have questions? So Hearing none. I guess why it's have a quick one. As far as, so are you looking for us to approve the extra money just in case at this time? Or are you thinking about are you require, uh, would their request be to hold off on the, the extra $250,000 until that investigation has been completed? So the request is just to amend your application so that you, this, the trust at, at approval in this upcoming Maystown meeting would be funded at $550,000 for the purposes that you're charged with. So any affordable housing purpose under your umbrella before, would so be... W these funds would be able to be used for that unless the CPC opted to put specific parameters around the use of those funds. Um, but you are not bound to spend this money. Any, any expenditure of these funds would have to be by vote of this trust at the requisite time. Um, so if you decided to proceed with this acquisition or any other, you would have the funds to do so. It's my understanding the CPC kind of was t looking for direction to see that the trust was willing to take on responsibility um, for, for, you know, ha 
requesting the funds, receiving the funds, and supported you know such a project um, was my understanding. That is so also my understanding. Under sorry, Mr. Chair. I think uh, is what kind of provoked this. The the CPC seemed to indicate that they want to ensure the trust, who would be the holder of the deed to this property, wants Correct. the property. So we're we are suggesting that this could potentially be a good site, but to make that determination totally, we need to do a little bit more research. Is there any other obstacles with this property? Is is it easy access to it is frontage Main Street? It's right off frontage both on Main okay. Street and on a Schumann Road. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no other major major constraints. Okay. Initially, you, you mentioned that there were how many bedrooms, how many beds is this? This one's by? just over, um, I want to say just over 100,000 square feet. Uh, I can't recall exactly, but it would be about a 10 bedroom project. So you could see a mix being something like three, two bedrooms, a three bedroom, and a one bedroom in one building or multiple buildings. So it's, it's 10, 10 bedrooms total? Yeah, without any additional uh, uh, intervention like a nitrogen aggregation plan. Uh, access to sewer, or, or this property is an early phase of sewer, it should be noted, uh, but other uh, denitrifying septic system, 10 bedrooms is the figure. So is the, is the total project 550,000 or is that already working for at this point? So the, there's, no, there's no dollar price attached to this project other than the property owner has indicated to the CPC that he would sell it for 250. We don't know whether it's worth that or not. We're just saying we need to determine, do a little bit more due diligence so that <coughs> subsequent to an appraisal and a discovery of existing conditions, the trust might be in a reasonable position to determine its value and your willingness to pay. 250 so is just the figure that the gentleman has indicated would be his low number, um, but you would still be required and I would suggest negotiate the price pursuant to the existing conditions, the scope of the contamination, and well as a third party appraisal financed by the town. And, and just as a point of clarity, you know, I think what um, town planner is stating, it, nothing's been designed or anything, no conceptuals or anything for this project. It's all hypotheticals he's given you based on the square footage, uh, a maximum Correct. build out. Right. Correct. Just for clarity. Right. It just seems like it's, a, it's an awful, for, for such a small amount of un bedroom units, um, it just seems like an awful expensive project. And we don't even mean, and that's not to say, not, not that we, we can always back out of it, but um, I mean, it seems to be expensive. It, don't, don't we have the, don't we have existing, I'm not opposed to this Can plan, you just pull the mic a little closer? But I, I'm, I'm, cons I'm concerned about the, uh, the, the, the cost of the project overall. I don't know where we're going with it. There seems to be a lot of if issues here. Don't we have existing property that we, we had intended to use? For? With, with certainty, Tom. I, and again, there's no, there's no cost attached to this specific project. The, 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 the request to modify the application is only to in, give you enough funds to ensure you have the ability to exercise within your discretion the right to purchase if you want it. Right. But you don't have to buy it at 250 or any other price. I think, uh, you know, in contrast to um, that, <coughs> That perspective, you know, there's, um, I don't think the town should wait. We're in a housing crisis. And so to address the housing shortage, you know, we need to look at uh, smaller scale projects instead of, you know, 42 unit projects, uh, limiting ourselves to 42 unit projects. You know, a, a project such as this, it, in the grand scope of things, it's not cost, costing, um, you know, it's not, it's not going to cost the same as a 42 unit property uh, to build it out. So, you know, 10 units is a much smaller in scale. It's got uh, frontage on two streets. So, um, you know, it, it could cost substantially less in comparison to like a large scale affordable, affordable housing build out. And we could get like three units out of it, you which would get... be good for that area. <coughs> You're not impacting the area with a lot of vehicles and whatever. It would only be either, you know, Three units with three, three, three bedrooms. That's that's pretty Evan. good. I, I can also suggest to the rest of the trust that um, if you opted not to vote tonight to amend your application, to amend your submission to the CPC, um, the CPC has voted to submit articles of town meeting to fund the trust for three hundred thousand right. dollars. 
Um, if you did nothing tonight and in, in May the voters opted to fund the trust for that $300,000, you would then still be in a position to, to purchase this property if you felt at that time it was advantageous. This just gives you a cushion to purchase that property in addition to effectuating some of the other affordable housing priorities that are within your charge. And we have the money available to do it, to put, put it in the trust. I think we should. Correct. Mr. Chair. Just a quick one. Um, Evan, so do we have the capacity to take these or do the analysis in-house? We or have. I've spoken with Catherine and I've spoken with the health director. We have the capacity to dig a hole and take a soil sample and send that to a lab. That would be the scope of what we're able to handle in-house. So it's not a, so it wouldn't be like a true phase two, which I do deal with on a commercial basis. It's not a phase two wells testing. No, I think at that point we'd be able to take the, the results of that lab analysis, submit, put out the request for letters of interest, noting the contamination on the site, provide the plans we do have on record and allow a developer to sit, tell us whether or not they think there's a feasible project there. Yes, town manager. So, I, go ahead. Obviously, I leave the decision making up to you folks, the trust, but uh, I just don't want to go from toxic stew to a toxic dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I, I hope we're going to do more than one test hold or you're going to do a few because it could be how large how large is the property piece of property it's not significant in size 1. it's three four uh, acres there are two properties totaling t uh, two i want to say two and a half acres in total oh it's two yeah two properties one about an acre one a bit more than an acre so it's not it's not three but it's more than two. Oh, that's great so it's not substantial in size i think um so you're going to do mul multiple tests just to see if you hit Probably do it like we would a perk test, you know, to okay. dig five, six holes on the property yep. um, and send those soil samples right. down. And deal with the, any wood in the, in the property. It's just typical excavation, so as right. far as I'm concerned. Okay. So that's the suggested course of action. Right. Everyone feel comfortable to take a vote? Sure. I motion uh, that we add, uh, we change our request of 300000 to 550000 Second. second that motion. Uh, hearing a first and second, um, we'll go around the table. Alan? Alan? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. 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 I'm a yes as well, so that votes unanimous to endorse the project. Uh, that motion passes. Thanks, Evan. Good presentation. I believe that was the only matter before the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, so Make a motion to close the Affordable Housing Trust. Second. Hearing a first and second, all those say aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming in. That's it. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. <laughs> you too. I'd accept a motion to approve uh, meeting minutes from our Monday, January 9th, 2023 meeting. So moved. Hearing a second. Second. Yeah. Okay, I just second. Was waiting. All right. <laughs> Hearing a first and second. Um, I have, Michaela. I have a small. I have a small edit that I've already given to Kathy. Okay. Um, and it's on. Third to last, the third to last page, underwater quality updates. And again, it's just a typo. I just wanted to get this right. It um, should read discussion and approval of select board representative and then Cape Cod and Islands Water Protection Fund. So it's just, it's a typo. Oh. It's just a typo, but I thought a motion to so, approve the uh, amended minutes. So Second. We're, we're entertaining a motion to um, amend the motion to include approval with edits. And Carol, you made the motion. Made the motion. Tom, second. you seconded? Yes. Okay. All right, having a first and second, Michaela? Yes. Tom? Yes. 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 I'm a yes as well. Um, that motion passes unanimously.
Next, we'll take public comments. I only have two tonight. Um, we'll start with the first, Brian Everett. <clears throat> Is that Brian or Brent? Brian. Brian, yeah. Brian all right. So I, I was going to comment after the this golf course proposal comes oh. up. Can I do that or should I do it now? Uh, for starters, let's uh, give your name and address. Sure. Brian uh, Everett, 77 Forest Drive, Mashby. Okay. And, and it's public comment, so uh, I won't restrict you to not talk about it. So I can wait till the discussion about this golf course? Uh, we can do that. Yeah, we all can right. comment. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, next, we have Greg McKelvey. Good evening, folks. Been a while. Good to see you. Uh, last week, I'm sorry, two weeks ago when you guys met, there was a lot of public comment regarding the New York Times article. And you would have thought, you would have thought the sky was falling from that article, like people had never heard there was a problem in Mashpee. Well, people in Mashpee know there's a problem, and the people in Mashpee know something's being done about it. They don't need intimidation from the New York Times and the people that sent that article to us to remind us of that. We have a wastewater system that's working, that's going to be, be working soon. They're working to get that done. We have heads of departments like Evan and Drew and, and the health department people who are doing their jobs, the heads of departments, and doing a, a good job, if I may say so and trying to get things done, trying to bring articles forward to this committee. And I would say that's their job. Their job is administrative, along with the town manager. Your job is policy, and you should be focused on policy, not administrative things. The second thing I want to say is that uh, as a member of the finance committee, which I am, uh, uh, you may get an update tonight from the town manager, and I totally speak for myself tonight when I say that uh, you need to take a hard look at it. In the past, our finances have been, well, we can do this and that. There's a time coming, and choices are going to have to be made to say, well, we can do this or that. It's coming. And I think the townspeople need to be aware of that, that there's a financial cost to all this, and it could be overwhelming as time goes off on if it's not planned and looked at carefully. The third thing I'd like to say is this. I am for no building moratorium. Do not believe in the building moratorium for this town. Uh, Mashpee has other solutions it can go after. I would say that we live in a world of extremes. No, we, ha we have to stop all the building. No, we have to build everything. Where are the people coming together to say, let's cooperate and work together? Do we need extremes on each end? Can't we find people willing to work together and come together for this town rather than having one extreme or the other? I think it's a little disingenuous to, to talk about uh, affordable housing at the same time think about a building moratorium. Seems to me like people are talking out both sides of their mouths. It's not fair to the taxpayer and it's not fair to the town. People should be working together, cooperating together uh, in a positive, safe way. Thank you. Moving on, uh, we have um, discussion and approval of grant application with regard to the Community Development Block Grant, um, presentation by Town Planner, Evan Lur. Good evening again. Good evening. You have two memos in your packet um, for me today. The first that you'll have is, is outlining a general concept of a, of a program that um, came about with conversations with uh, select woman, Wyman Colombo, and chairman, chair of the planning board. Ultimately, we're looking at um, providing assistance to low, moderate income households to uh, assist in their efforts and requirement to eventually connect to the sewer uh, collection system when the collection system is constructed and the wastewater treatment facility is up and running. Um, I've had this discussion with uh, DHCD staff who administers this particular grant program that uh, this is an eligible activity under the, the grant program and that qualifying households could uh, receive funding to make that connection under a housing rehabilitation program. Uh, the town of Barnstable operates a very similar loan structured program. Um, 
And so as the town is making progress towards getting phase one of the sewer service area up and running, it seemed prudent to provide every opportunity for qualifying households to uh, get financing or some assistance to make that connection when it's inevitably coming. Um, I've had some correspondence with uh, local nonprofit partners to assist in the administration of such a program, notably HAC, uh, the chair of the planning board has indicated another potential partner on this project, really to assist with income verification, um, because every household who wants to apply for this grant will need to eventually, uh, it, they'll need to be determined to be eligible to receive the funds under the federal program. Um, something that, um, my office doesn't have any experience doing, so it seems prudent to uh, partner with someone who does. Uh, so we've had Hack. Hack has had, you know, expressed a general interest in, in learning more. Um, Mary Wagan suggested that Hatch, a program I think up in Harwich, offers similar services and has offered similar services uh, to other communities um, in this regard. Uh, so I think that this is a program that we should be going after. It seems to be prudent to provide a homeowners with every opportunity uh, during what will be a likely expensive proposition for some, and well, for many, and for some, you know, potentially very difficult. Um, but when I, I'm also weighing the balance between um, the competitiveness of the application and consideration of um, what's required to go into the grant to really bring the grant up to a position of getting funded, other projects in that are likely in the pipeline, and our readiness to pursue the grant. Um, so in my correspondence with uh, the state, they really stress that the, uh, the competitive nature of this application, we could be penalized for not being ready soon enough to expend the funds because A, we don't have a completed collection system and, we, and second, we don't have a completed wastewater treatment facility. And the, according to Mr. Jack, the soonest the facility and the collection system will be up and running is summer 2024. And so for that reason, uh, it makes, I think I can, I think we'd be in a very difficult position to be awarded funds in this upcoming program year, but can nearly, can, and for next year, March 2024, would be in a much more advantageous position to be successful in our grant application. How long would it take? Oh, excuse me. How long would it take to apply for it for a homeowner to apply for it? Because you have to, you're going to have to go through all the homeowners, so that's going to take time. Unclear. I think we need to learn a little bit more from a, a potential partner and what it takes, what information and data they require to so be they, income we should, eligible. We should probably start this probably next no uh, this coming November to be ready for 2024. I, th uh, you know, I. I I think it makes more sense to approach 2024, but further, um, this, the, this particular grant application is a very, very heavy lift. Um, and so you want to apply in the program year where you're likely to be awarded funds. Um, and so given the capacity of my office and given the amount of time we have to prepare for March 2024, um, and also given that up to $9,000 for consultant assistance can be charged to this grant to prepare the application, I'd say that my, my office would be mu in a much better position to support an endeavor for March 2024 as opposed to March 2023. And I know for, for many that it um, feels like uh, uh, we're waiting again until next year. But the trade-off is a lot of work would go into the preparation of this particular application for March with a very high degree of likelihood we won't receive funds when if we focus our energy on next year, we have a higher, a much higher degree of success. So one question I have is um, <clears throat> if we were to go through hack for a, a administrative uh, assistance, uh, what, would they, what would they charge for this, something like that? So again, I believe it's up to 20% of the program costs can be charged for administrative purposes. So whatever hacks or any other servicing agent would be, we would include that as cost charged towards the grant. Um, so there wouldn't be any you know, cost to the town per se. It would be charged to the grant. Nice. Next question is, um, you know, if we were gonna do something like that, rather than uh, uh, contracting with a hack, is there flexibility with our own um, Nashby Affordable Housing Authority, who 
does uh, vetting of um, affordable um, requirements uh, to contract with them to do the service uh, so that the money stays in town. Can't because of privacy. They do it anyway. Housing. They already do housing. Housing authority does it. That's what I was asking. Housing authority. Oh, not affordable housing. Not affordable yeah. housing, but the housing of the Mashby Housing Authority. Right. Uh, if they could contract they, the service, yeah. could do the service um, I think rather it's than a hot hack, just so that the money stays in town. I could. I mean, I twenty percent. I don't know what we're, we're, the maximum we're asking for, but you know, it could be substantial, right. and it could benefit our own affordable housing authority. I could certainly check with their staff and uh, get back. I don't know. I, I don't want to suggest that they have the capacity or anything like that. But I mean, you know, if it supplements their funding, their, their budget, then I would prefer going down that that kind of route. I think there may be some available resources. I, I, I am a little concerned about the timeline if we wait a full year. I certainly don't want to get a, uh, a statement that indicates that now we're late when we were actually early. So um, I don't know exactly how to process that timeline or, or who you spoke to as far as uh, when the appropriate date would be. Um, but I think that's all something that has to be neatly coordinated. The other thing I'm concerned with is, uh, and I'm on the fence of it with this myself, <laughs> the same reasons the you know if we don't apply now and we apply in 2024 with the presumption that it's going to be more competitive but then it's not funded where does that put us you know in, in supplementing uh, cost to our, our you know constituents at that point it's a fair question but not one I'm really able to respond to I, I just yes. think um, <clears throat> we are not positioned well for success in this grand round but we can do everything we can to be successful in the next program year. Because this with one, the with, <clears throat> with the knowledge that this is competitive. This one you have to have the applications in by March third, right? No, I, I do get that, Michaela. And, um, so we talked about amounts. The um, maximum amount is one point three million. So it's a substantial grant. Um, uh, with regard to timeline, I know we talked a little bit about this before. One of the concerns I have is the 2022 application never came out. So what we're looking at now is 22-23. Oh. We really don't know for sure if the 24 will come out. We hope it does. But I worry if we don't. I worry in both regards. I worry about the timeline, but I'm also really concerned that if we let this go, and something happens, we won't be ready to, if we have to go in in 2025, we won't be able to assist homeowners with this. That's a, one concern I have. We have, and I don't know the answer to this, um, but you have, the funds would be released on, let's see, 7 one and we have to 6 When did we think we were going to be ready? And I know you've mentioned, you've had conversations with Ray, um, and I think you have a figure in here, but I can't remember. Say that again, please. When will we be ready to use these funds for hooking up? When will we be ready as soon as they're awarded and in our account? I think she's asking, no, I'm asking like, about when would our process sewer be of the sewer. Uh, uh, yeah. ready for tie-ins? We yeah. are not in a position right now to state in our grant application that we have a reasonable expectation of exactly when this facility would be open. So in next year of March, I'm assuming we'll be in a much stronger position to state when the facility will actually be operational. Okay, another thing I think about a lot as someone who's written a lot of grants and worked with agencies is establishing a relationship with the agency is important. Um, one of the conversations that I'm not arguing for or against getting this submission in, I lean towards getting it in, but I just wanna have the conversation. One of the conversations that you and I had was the advantage to submitting and even if we weren't competitive enough, we didn't receive the funds, what we would receive back from the agency is, first of all, it would establish a relationship and we'd know where we had fell short, short yeah. so that we could resubmit. So that's, that's a question I think is just worth discussing. If we do apply for, for this now mm -hmm. and we don't have anybody ready to use it, 
do we get penalized if we do get the grant? Or do they want to see who's ready? If you, well, you do get penalized if you don't expend the funds within the requisite time frame. Like for example, in so this upcoming program year, if you haven't expended year. the requisite amount of funds, you are not eligible to apply in this program year. Oh, okay. um, I think uh, the main, my main primary concern at this juncture is that uh, I am a, generally a large contributor to grant applications in the town. And I am running multiple projects that are significant in terms of their scope and priority. And so to do this in this program year, I will have to shift all of my attention away from those projects to this. And I have concerns about that. Um, and, I, 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 and, the, and that's just a reality in terms of the capacity of me to deliver in this program year. Yeah. So, so just, I, I, I agree with you. And um, I, I absolutely think you're, you're dead on with this. You need to be prepared, um, get the paperwork done, move, move as quickly as you can, and uh, seek approval. I mean, and have those funds ready to go when we get the okay to dig the hole and, and get this going. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, better to be early than late on this one. And I wish if I was less strained in my capacity to do this grant, I would probably say, yes, we should absolutely apply and develop that relationship and see where we fall short if we fall short. Um, but I'm very concerned about my capacity to deliver and I don't want to overpromise. May I? I, I understand your capacity as well and I'm very empathetic to that. I, I did offer to write the grant. Um, so we have the capacity. That's how we want to move forward. And there may be all the other reasons not to. Understood. Thank you. Dave, could I yes. just ask a question? I don't want to be out of turn, but did you say Barnstable is doing this already? Barnstable is, has been awarded funds for um, a loan program for their sewer connections, yes. So they are operating and manage a program very, very similar to what I think we're going to endeavor to do here. They have um, dedicated staff for this program. Okay, and and what have they outlaid at this point? If they've if they've already hooked up, have they hooked up people? Um, they have stated their app, their their applicant pool has been relatively minimal. Um, in their first, I think, operating year, they said they had two applicants. Awesome. Um, is there precedent for um, the agency to provide extensions? Not to my knowledge. I think it's too competitive. Yeah. yeah. The. Um, I mean, on the expenditure of the funds, like if you didn't spend them in the with calendar, good cause yeah, and good reason, yes. There's precedent for extension. I think you know, with anything, there's flexibility if you can substantiate a good reason why. And Barnstable, when they applied, how, how how many attempts did they take before they got it? Did they don't get know, it David. first round? I don't know. All right. Arden. Hi, Arden Russell. I used to work in Barnstable. Um, Barnstable is different. They're an entitlement community, mm -hmm. so they get. CDBG funds directly to the community. They don't have to apply to the state. So smaller towns like Mashpee has to apply to get a portion of the state's CDBG funds, but Barnstable gets their own funds and then they develop and design programs on their own. And we do have, they did have a full-time CDBG coordinator who then implemented all the programs. I do wanna say that the administration of a program like this is, is a heavy lift. It's more than just income certifying people. People are required to get bids for the um, hook up and you have to review that there's time frames connected with that so you, you know there you have to have all your paperwork in order. you do you yeah. have to get all your paper the homeowner has to have all their paperwork in order often Davis Bacon wages apply to the mm -hmm. contractor who is doing the work mm -hmm. there's monitoring that's associated with that um, it's a very CDBG is a very complicated program to implement and they are very very strict with their timelines if you don't use the money they take it back okay. thank you Aaron. thank you, Aaron. thank you. Um, I, I know that the tribe applied for these funds and it actually took several years to get the award. Um, it is very competitive and um, they request a lot of detailed information um, is my experience. Um, so this way, if we, if we wait until March of 2024, we're giving the homeowner plenty of time to get their paperwork in order, to get their finance is in order and to fill out applications for the grant because that's gonna take time. We're going to have to have someone um, bring them through the the loop that they're going to have to have, like, like Arden just said, you have to have your um, contractor who you're going to have do it, hook you up. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't need a contractor, you just need quotes. 
Yeah. From, from oh, quotes. Yes. Okay. It, it, you're, as a but town, you you're, you're to required to have competitive up. bids. Right. So, um, so bids. there's a bid process once you get the funds, but for the proposal package, you need to have some sort of hard numbers that are, you know. To look at. Yeah. John? So, Evan, um, so, and this is a grant. So this is, this is, you know, grant funds, this isn't part of the loan, the, like the Bonspo loan program. Well, so, am I correct? Well, it depends how you want to structure the program. Right. Barnstable offers it as a forgivable loan program. But we could do this as a loan. You can do this as a financing package to qualifying homeowners. It's really up to us to design. I think at this point, it's not fully designed. Okay, but, but Bonspo also has their, their septic or Title V loan program that exists. So that's separate and exists. Yes, it is. I, so I understand that. So I, I guess my point is, if we apply for the grant next year, which we may be in the best situation, as they said, at the, um, for the bridges and the canal, we weren't shovel ready and shame on us because we had designs of bridges six years ago. They delayed and they said, okay, let's, what, what do we think about what kind of bridges? We weren't shovel ready, so our financing got denied. That was the excuse that we were given. So in this case, it sounds like it may be the same type of situation. We may not be in the most ready, situa ready position to apply for the funds to put us in a better pole position, if you will. That'd be just the way I'm looking at it. Um, the other thing is, if we get denied this grant money, it's not like people can't hook up. We can still use the Bonspo loan program. That's correct. That is available to the public. So I just don't, you know, it's not like if we get denied, it's not like I can't afford to hook up. No, that's not true. There is a loan program. I participated in it two years ago. Um, you know, at that time it was five, five and a half percent. Not so great. The new loan program is much better. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I just wanna make sure that everyone's aware if we do apply even next year or this year, whatever, we do get denied both years or just next year, it's, we still have resources for the community to hook up, connect, and it, it, it is based on income. So the interest is based on income through the Bonsable Loan Program. So there is another, you know, availability, the funds. Um, are there in-kind requirements? No. Uh, cost share requirements? No. I think um, for this particular program, particularly phase one, my biggest concern at this point that I don't have an answer to yet, and one that I think we need to answer, is that 50% of the households in the sewer service area are Sea Oaks and Summerwood. This is land held in common with the condo association, and the funds for CDBG need to be expended directly to a qualifying homeowner. So when you get into lands held in common with multi-unit buildings, the disbursement of up to 50% of those households becomes a little bit more complicated, and I have questions about how the program would work in consideration of 50% of the service area being those two condominiums. Case in point, that's why the other loan program is still available. So, so do you need a vote on this tonight? I think he's looking for direction. I'm looking for some you direction. Know. I um, you know, again, I, yeah, I've stated, I've stated the case. And I'm just wondering if there's anything else we can do to support, you know, the application for 2024, you know, this year that would help us towards the application next year. I think, you know, given um, the scope of long-term projects coming out of my office, I would encourage the. Uh, the uh, consultant assistance utilizing the $9,000 potential towards a grant and procuring that consultant sooner rather than later. I did reach out to consultants mm -hmm. um, to see if they could jump in now to help me put this together and, and they are not available. It's just too late in the round. Um, I reached out to them a few weeks ago um, but are, would be more than ready to assist us for the subsequent program year. So later in the year that is it something that you could start to work on? I think so, I think we should start to work on it. Yeah. Right. So okay. right now to yeah. be prepared for 2024. Yeah. Okay. Um, may I? Could yeah. we could we set some kind of time frame when we would start to work on this, 
And could you just like touch base with us every month or two or a couple months? So I think we should start, you know, July 1st, preparing for the 2024. I've had some colleagues uh, identify consultants who specifically do community development block grants with municipalities. Um, I would be more than happy to put together an RFQ to procure those services if that were something that we could fund and would be supported by the town manager and, and the select board. Um, and then once they're on board and we have a certain contract in place, then yes, we can hit, absolutely hit the ground running. I think um, understanding those two, the legal questions around the condominiums and then having an identified um, partner, whether that be the Mashpee Housing Authority or HAC or some other entity is also critical to fully design uh, the program. I think um, the other thing I read into this memo is that uh, if a municipality or a group of municipalities has not received Massachusetts CDBG grant in three prior years, up to 9,000 for grant application preparation could be charged as an allowable expense to the grant. Yes. So yeah. that's a reimbursable yes. um, uh, amount. So what if we were to take a vote to for town manager to authorize the 9,000 towards the application, at least we'd be taking some kind of action today towards a submittal. Is that something that we should consider? Yeah, uh, after July 1st. After July 1st. After July 1st. That would be 1st. next, yeah. All right. Um, you know, at least we're taking some kind of action, you know, I, I guess. Is you know, my, my right. position, right. And I know for the tribe, we actually hired like a, a consultant that works specifically on ICDBG grants. My first job was, was, there, was you know? CDBG. It was my first job out of grad school. It, yeah. My whole job, it was 40 hours of my week. Every week was doing this grant, and it is a big lift. They, they are. Well, I think we have names of several consultants who, who do a lot of these, so. Yeah. So I, I guess... Make a motion, accept a motion uh, to, a motion to uh, authorize town manager to enter into a. Authorize town manager to um, not to exceed 9,000 towards grant application after July 1st. Yes. For, in regards awesome. to the community development. Is that for specific to the ICDBG yeah. application 2024. Yes. Is that your motion? Can I, can I pose a question I to the board before the vote? Hmm? Yeah, I accept the motion. So moved. Okay. Yeah. So, so, Chair, just a quick question for Madeline before. What if, what if in the event we seek uh, quotes for the service and it exceeds $9,000? I'll come back to the board. That's right. Very good. Thank you. So did you, someone I make did. the motion? I did. Michaela, do second. I hear a second? John? Um, yes. Any discussion? No, I think no. that's good. Um, good. Carol? Yes. John? Yes. Tom? Yes. Michaela? Yes. I'm a yes. Um, so that motion's unanimous as well. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Next matter at hand is the discussion and approval of town manager corresponding with state officials with regards to the speed limits on designated roads. <laughs> that sparked a lot of uh, Are you ready? interest. <laughs> yes, I think I'm ready for this. Um, so unbeknownst to uh, me, um, some signs had been changed on Quinnequisset, and I received several emails on the subject matter and subsequently learned for the very first time that there was an agreement uh, back in 1972, I believe it was. <laughs> and they're just getting around to it? <laughs> between, between the state and the town. So uh, full disclosure, I was totally ignorant of this agreement. I had no idea that this agreement existed. Um, but I did become aware of it, and uh, there are some very concerned people. Um, and I've received emails and calls. And uh, interestingly enough, um, in follow-up, I had uh, a discussion with our local state reps, uh, and, or state rep and state senator, 
uh, office, and I would like to follow up. Um, the authorization that I am seeking from you is to uh, reflect the fact that the town wishes to uh, restore the um, normal speed limit. The speed limits <laughs> as they were, if it's legally possible. Now there is a convoluted process that we're all familiar with that this Commonwealth has to go through. So I'm not going to sit here and suggest tonight that it's possible. But uh, what I am uh, willing to do is to research it and see what our options are. Um, and uh, I find the 72 agreement a little um, outdated uh, in the sense that uh, things have changed a lot in Mashpee, in particular in that road. And uh, of uh, interesting note was uh, a letter that uh, indicated that uh, there might have been a speed trap or something like that. I don't think anything could be further from the truth. Um, I think what the town actually wanted to do uh, and I speak confidently when I say this, is to establish a proper, prudent, and reasonable speed given the conditions that were existing then and the conditions existing now. Um, and with all due respect to people and associations off Cape, I don't think they know the pedestrian traffic, they don't know the motoring traffic, et cetera, et cetera, for that particular road. The folks who do are you. So um, I'm just uh, requesting um, your support to uh, just continue to follow up on this. And if you want me to just leave it alone, then I will. But um, no, I, I, I will uh, I think we need be at a loss as to what to tell these people that are contacting my office. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, John. I, I, I find this, like, alarming that... I mean, mm -hmm. it, they just took it upon themselves to increase the speed on this road, which I feel you, to go back to your words always, you are going to go as far as safety when it comes down to safety. There's nothing you will stop. You will stop at nothing to continue forward. On that, on those words, is there any way we can, anything we can do to say, you know what, we're taking down the signs? We don't feel it's safe for well, the community. And <clears throat> if you're looking for a vote of confidence, I'm guessing the board would support that. I mean, I because the, if I don't think, if you don't take a hard line with the state, this could go on forever. We could be looking at those same signs for two years. Exactly. I think if we don't do something extreme, we're not going to be heard. That's just my opinion. And, if we and just I'll stop talking. Down. Well, I Can't think we it was said earlier down? this evening, maybe try to avoid one extreme or the other. But the fact is, this is what I believe in. Um, I think we got to follow the process. Um, and I'm going to try to do that. But at the same time, I don't want to see safety compromised. Mm -hmm. What am I concerned about? Well, I'm concerned that uh, not too long ago, we did have a fatality on that road. Um, there are golf carts crossing that road. Um, and I could go on and on. I'm not going to uh, sit here and dominate the whole meeting. I'm just saying there are legitimate concerns that I think need to be addressed. Those are the things that I'd like to cite, and I'm just asking for your support in doing it because I think it has a little bit more oomph if I'm saying the select board are behind me. That's all. Well, I'd like to see. You. I'd like to see. You know some sort of matrix to establish speed limits, you know, as we see fit based on the, the, the residency and uh, use of the road and kind of width of the road. Yeah, several different criteria that kind of feed into that discussion and, and that should, because I mean, I saw one, one road was listed as a highway and it's, a, it's not a highway. I mean, it, it, it's a with the exception secondary road, you know, it's not a highway by any means. With the exception of 28, 151 and 130, I think uh, you folks should be establishing the speed limits on any road within the town of Mashpee. Now, that may conflict with Massachusetts general law, but I think that's uh, my professional opinion. Well, I agree. So I'd like to make a motion of support 
for the town manager to do whatever he sees fit to put the signs speed limit back to where it should be for the safety of the citizens. And we Nashby. need to do this before summertime because we're going to have a problem. I'll second that motion, John. I mean, I, I don't know what that is, but that's what that motion is. We'll to write, say, we'll have to start do whatever you see fit. Yep, let's uh, get, let's here, just move forward with this and see if we can get the change. Yeah. Hearing, hearing a first and second, any discussion on the uh, motion as stated? We need to get it done. Hearing none, uh, Michaela? Yes. Yes. Tom? John, yes. yes. Carol? Uh, I'm a yes as well. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> So we have discussion and certification of the hiring process for the following in the uh, fire excuse department. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, you missed us. Uh, Did I? Uh, oh, sorry. Introduction and information from Eversource, uh, Eversource Community Relations Specialist, Ronit Goldstein. Yes, and um, she's uh, coming in to speak to you today just to give you introduction and so on. Uh, if we had Ronit on the speed limit sign, it'd be taken care of now. That's how much, <laughs> how much uh, confidence I have in Ronit. Uh, I've had right to deal with it. her on several <laughs> occasions between our blue sky tower, between our, all these traffic things and lights, and she is always there, always represents us very well and gets things done. So very I can't responsive. say enough. Yes, good. Welcome. I apologize for overlooking the line item. That's okay. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Chair Whedon, uh, members of the board. My name is Ronit Goldstein. I'm with Eversource Energy. Uh, as noted um, by Mr. Taylor, my title is Community Relations. It's actually at Economic Development as well, but I've uh, uh, been with the utility for almost five years and I've covered uh, the territory uh, of the Cape and Martha's Vineyard, including the town of Mashpee, obviously, uh, since the spring of 2019. So it's a pleasure. I think we interacted and I'm coming before you this evening just really to give you some general information, answer any questions you might have, and an opportunity just to connect a name to the face. I think the board's changed uh, a little bit since uh, the pandemic when I believe that was the last time I was before you supporting um, a construction team with engineering and our rights agent for some of the projects, uh, the one nobly on 130, Route 130, and then um, I believe we spoke about the two projects that we had on uh, Great Oak and uh, Rock, I think it's Red Brook. the other one is Rock Landing and Great Rock and yeah, Red, yeah. Red Brook. I had to, it's like it sounds like if you have to say it five times fast, it's uh, <laughs> you're never going to get through it. But in um, New Seabury, just for awareness, it's it's associated with private roads, but um, it still will benefit the residents of the town. So I want to thank you first for letting me uh, come before you for a, a brief introduction. I want to thank your, I always like to thank your public safety officials, Chief Phelan, um, Chief Carline, um, former fire chief. Uh, Thomas Rulo, who I worked with for a long time. Um, they're really our partners um, in the community, along with your DPW director, Catherine Laurent, during storms, uh, during what we call gray skies versus blue skies. I'm not sure what today would be called, but we didn't activate storm. Um, I'm available, um, as your town leadership um, has mentioned regularly, uh, to respond to sort of a bucket of of issues and, and topics. I'm, uh, for lack of, uh, no pun intended, I'm a good conduit to get to some answers and some folks at a, a fairly large organization that is Eversource. Um, so I wanted to I'll pause there. I did want to share that there's some um, upgrades that have been done. Uh, so thank you to your public safety folks that are definitely our partners. Keep our folks safe as well as your residents. Um, a couple of regional um, upgrades that you may not be aware of. Um, we rebuilt the Bourne switching station, which is um, really where the power lines, the high voltage transmission lines cross the canal. And that was built, uh, those lines are being switched over at the station, but it's a brand new station. That benefits the entire Cape, but it really specifically benefits the upper Cape and then towards the mid Cape. Um, you may not even be aware because the station itself is actually within Joint Base Cape Cod. So you see it when you're on Sandwich Road, if you kind of look up, um, not while you're driving, but if you look up, you can see the station high up. Um, that's one upgrade that just occurred. Um, and there's some large transmission projects that will be happening in Falmouth <coughs> Tap, which is the substation on Sam Turner, not too far from Mashpee as well. Coming down the pike, we're just in, in uh, proposing it to the state and in, in the midst of design. So those are larger transmission projects that will really uh, create re additional reliability and loops, if you will, 
and redundancies within the region. We do have one more project that engineering mentioned to me also in the new Seabury pump and asset area that'll be coming down the pike. It's in design. It's on Waiting Place Road, I believe. Um, so I'll have more information on that. Again, it's, it's not a town road, but it benefits that region, creates, we like to do even smaller scale, pick up one to two to 3,000 customers just by connecting circuits that aren't um, already connected. Gives us more uh, abil switching ability, if you will, um, to pick up load um, and, and then reduce the amount of time that folks are out. So I just wanted to open it up if there's any general questions. I know this region, um, as we come into the end of this week, it's a year since that big snowstorm last year, um, Blizzard Keenan. So I get a little bit of angst leading up to these year anniversary, but we had the October 2021 storm, which I know was really, the whole region took a, a significant hit for multiple days. And just wanna thank you for, um, you know, serving the community in your capacity and helping to support us as we restored the area. I don't know if there's any specific questions or just a, a hello to pop in and say, and I, I really appreciate uh, the partnership with your your town administration. Um, they they know to bring issues to me and I'll, I'll I'll get it to the right place as quickly as possible and get back to them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, what happens a lot of times is <clears throat> we don't know who to call. And Ronit can be that conduit yeah. for us. Just call and, me. <laughs> and sometimes, uh, you know, it's just a simple, oh, yeah, well, he's going to be out there on Tuesday or whatever. Right. But she's always there for us. And uh, Well, that's good. <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're fortunate, believe me. Any questions? <clears throat> Members of the board? Thank you. Uh, my door is open. I know we've met, I think, in quick conversation at Town Hall. Um, so my door is open certainly directly to me or through your administration. I'm happy to assist in any way I can. Are these uh, upgrades uh, for reliability upgrades, uh, are we converting over to like a smart grid that where, where rates can be managed, better managed uh, to offset peak hour rates versus off peak hours and that sort of thing to try and uh, mitigate some of the in inflation cost of the Overall. Yeah, so I can't, I will say that um, most of the upgrades are for reliability and some of the larger upgrades are to allow for, allow for renewables. So you're going to have a couple of wind projects that are coming into connecting into Barnstable. It's our responsibility to conduct the upgrades to facilitate that. So that may offset indirectly in some ways or give po folks more options. Um, there's not a direct, um, so by smart grid, I think you might be referring to like a microgrid. I don't know that that'll offset the costs. And unfortunately, we're all living uh, what's a little more of a global uh, issue with energy costs. Um, I can certainly send some information. I know folks are struggling not just on the Cape but in many regions. Um, I've shared some information with um, town leadership. I can certainly share with the board to point customers in, in the direction of how they can um, apply for programs, make pay, get on payment plans, or help reduce their energy usage, um, either through ideas through Eversource or through Cape Light Compact. So I don't know if that directly answered your question, Chair Whedon, but it's, yeah. the smart grid wouldn't necessarily reduce costs. It, I, I, so that's my, my general answer. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Uh, that's all I had. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, Ronit. And, Great, yeah. Um, Thanks. Thanks for having me for Good a few to minutes. Good see you again. Good luck. Uh, yeah. Good luck with the speed signs. I don't know if I can help on that one, but you can certainly give me a call. <laughs> Jump on board and show them how it's done. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, now we'll move on to the discussion and certification of the hiring process for the following. In the fire department, uh, firefighter paradem par paramedic uh, Timothy Hodd. Administrative Assistant Jennifer Thomas. Mr. Chair, I can attest to the fact that all the policies and procedures of the town were followed, and uh, those were the uh, final individuals from the appointing authority, the fire chief. Accept a motion to certify? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Just to certify the process. I make so a motion. Can we do it both at once or individually? So moved. I think you can do both at once. At once. We've done it. Okay. Accept if the motion okay. to certify the process on both the hiring process uh, for the administrative assistant position and for the firefighter, firefighter, firefighter. position. Firefighter. So moved. Second. Uh, Carol 
makes the motion. Tom seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Michaela? Yes. Yes. Tom? Yes. yes. Don? Yes. Carol? I'm a yes as well. That motion passes unanimously. Uh, discussion and approval of the following appointments and resignations. Uh, for re resignations, we have from the Community Preservation Act Committee, uh, member at Lodge, Ed Locken. Uh, term expires June 30th, 2023. We do have a letter from Mr. Larkin. Um, this resignation will in no way affect any of my current appointments, uh, other cu current appointments to uh, town committees that I currently serve on. Uh, a accept a motion to... Um, uh, a motion to accept his resignation with a letter of appreciation. It, and for 18 years. Yeah. Appreciation. Wow. I mean, I know. Ed Locken is just a, a, a part He's of a this staple. town. He's a staple. That, um, no question. That he, he's put so much time and effort into so many different boards, um, so many committees. Um, yeah. he, he, it's just, he's been endless. I, I don't know if this is his last appointment or not. Is it, do you, do you know if this is uh, his only thing that he has uh, going with the town? I know his assistant um, um, moderator, moderator. Um, is that, is he gonna that continue with too. that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hope, I hope. He's just such a, a great it's guy and he's such an asset to the community. In no way affect my current appointments to other town committees. Yeah, all yeah. I can yeah. say is uh, I'm just aware of him resigning from this. Yes, Correct, sir, right. as stated. So, hearing a first and second, um, Carol? Yes. Yes. Ron? Yes. With regret. With regret. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Tom, Michaela. Uh, I'm a yes as well. That motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Uh, the next one we have. Um, you can skip that one. That one was put on. It needs to come on for the, our next meeting for the economic development. Okay. Okay. Uh, for the waterways appointments, waterways commission member at large. Term expires June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Rich Santa Santa Jello and Ronald March Assault. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sounds like you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> a motion to approve the member at large, the two members at large, Richard Santana and Ronald Marshall. I'll second that motion. <laughs> Hearing a first and second, any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Carol? Yes. John? Yes. Tom? Yes. Michaela? Yes. I'm a yes as well. That motion passes. Uh, unanimously. Next, we have uh, capital improvement program uh, committee member at large. Term expires June thirtieth. Uh, this one is John Livingston. John Livingston. Motion approved. John Livingston. Second. Hearing a first and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Carol. Yes. John. Yes. Tom, yes. Michaela. Yes. I'm a yes as well. The uh, motion is unanimous by all present. Uh, next, we have Conservation Commission, member at large, term expires June 30th, 2025. Erin <coughs> Copeland. A motion to approve Erin Copeland. Second. Hearing a first and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Michaela? Yes. Tom. Yes. John? Yes. Carol? Yes. I'm a yes as well. Uh, the motion is unanimous. Last but not least, we have Conservation Commission Associate Member Term expires June 30th, 2023. Sandra Godfrey. A motion to accept Sandra Godfrey. Second. Hearing a first and second. Any discussion? Um, Hearing none. Carol? Yes. Yes. John? Yes. Tom? Michaela? Yes. I'm a yes as well. That, two, uh, that motion passes unanimously by all present. Mr. Chair, can we just get a motion from the board to table the uh, the economic development uh, okay. appointment? Good, good point. I'd accept a motion to table um, economic development and industrial corporation appointment, uh, Rick Kerr, uh, term expiring June 30th, 2023. Until our next, Until our next, next, select board meeting. next select board meeting. So moved. 
Second. Hearing a first and second, um, Michaela? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Carol. Thank you. I'm a yes as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good call. Next, we have the <coughs> communications and correspondence, uh, old business, discussion and approval, uh, discussion and possible action on Community Preservation Act committee. This Gulf application, Drew, McMan Drew McManus, uh, continued from our January 9th, 2023 select board meeting. Good evening, Drew. Good evening, Drew McManus, Town of Mashpee Conservation Agent. Um, so you should all have a uh, revised packet in front of you for the disc golf course proposal. This would be specific to 156 Schumit Road, the, the parcel with the uh, existing dog park and pickleball courts. Uh, the previous packet that you had had a list of different options, which are still on the table, uh, but this is the new the recommended site out of all the sites that we've looked at um, and the reasons for this um, being a top priority uh, in terms of location for a course is um, we feel that, uh, and this is based on feedback at the last meeting before you, that with the existing pickleball courts and dog park, uh, having another recreational feature in this area would kind of create a recreational hub for the town and have it all kind of in the same area. Um, and you've also got uh, established parking, the back satellite lot for Heritage Park, um, which in discussions with um, other town officials, uh, mostly Catherine Laurent um, and Mary Bradbury, the recreational director, is trying to get an idea of you know the overall use of that parking lot, how often it becomes full. Usually during sporting events, they said it, it can fill up, but it's, uh, it's really during those times. So we feel that uh, that parking area can still accommodate users of the disc golf course without interfering with any other uh, uses at Heritage Park. Uh, and I did emphasize at the last meeting that I feel that the existing parking for the dog park and the uh, pickleball courts should not be used for disc golf parking because they're relatively small parking areas um, and those uses are, are pretty popular. So we, we feel it should be separated out uh, by using this satellite lot as designated parking for, for disc golf use. Um, in your packets too, I just expanded on the sport itself, um, what I believe are the um, benefits to the community uh, for a disc golf course. And then just some added description about, um, you know, retaining buffer zones to the road, to abutting properties, uh, and trying to incorporate and design this course in a way that won't create either a visual or noise nuisance uh, to any of the surrounding community members uh, on the street or nearby this location. So, be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Carl. Drew, um, <clears throat> I received a lot of concern um, of the road yes. going in to where pickleball and disc golf and where the dog park is. That you're going to have to designate because there's a lot of walkers, a lot of bicycles going in and out of that road. So right. <clears throat> there's throat> been a lot of concerns of scar cars coming down the road when there's walkers and bicycles. Sure. Is there going to be some sort of determination over to one side of the road so that the cars are not going where the walkers and the bicycles are? Yeah, I know there's no sidewalks on a Schumit. Mm -hmm. I don't even think there's a posted mm -hmm. speed limit currently. Um, there is so, <laughs> there <laughs> is not. Bring there up is a sore not. subject, but... <laughs> Can um, we work, pull those signs and we work... Mm -hmm. Yeah, put so... Put some new numbers on but it. But there is a... I, I received... Uh, <clears throat> Quite a few concerns. Uh, sure. There's children in that area that oh, live yeah. in. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're a little nervous about uh, bringing something more, which mm -hmm. is, is a good thing to bring it to that area, but uh, they have concerns. Sure, uh, understood. Um, I think that uh, well, my own opinion on this particular location uh, in regard to the increase in traffic, mm -hmm. um, I think that it would be pretty minimal, uh, at least in the beginning. Um, this would be the third disc golf course if approved, you know, in the general area of Mashpee Sandwich um, and, and Barstable. And so we anticipate that, because uh, the other uh, original course at Burgess Park and Marston's Mills experiences pretty heavy use, and that's because it was the only course around. So kind of spreading out the usage uh, a little more, um, and with a new course in Sandwich as well, 
that we, we anticipate that it would get regular use, but not overloaded use like you see at Burgess. In mm -hmm. fact, Burgess has actually experienced some relief because of the course in Sandwich. Um, in terms of like, you know, speeding and, and pedestrian safety, um, one of the things that I had thought about is, you know, when you're crossing the road from Heritage Park parking lot to get to the course, wherever that may be, there may need to be some signage or something like that. Um, I don't know if there's, you know, any thoughts to a crosswalk, but there's no sidewalks either. So I, I think just, you know, um, you know, patrol by the by the police department um, and just enforcing, you know, speed limits, uh, those sorts of things. When you're coming down to this end of a Schumann Road, you're essentially coming to a dead end. So speeding, I think, would be kind of, you know, self-policed, I guess. You can only speed so much at this point of the road. Um, but it is a concern, and I, and I certainly want to do whatever, you know, we can to address those concerns. John. Um, speed limit, a, a speed limit sign on the street early on, if that can be added, and definitely a crosswalk. I, and I don't think that's something that would be too difficult for the town to add, correct? Where would the crosswalk Oh, there's a cost. Crosswalk. Oh, well, a crosswalk. A crosswalk. Where? Right from across the parking lot, that, that gets, so they can walk across the street. And it, I think just because it's, if that's painted on the road, I think that automatically, It'll slow people. Down. It, it just it makes you think, it, it does make you slow down. Mm -hmm. So I'm just talking about painted, because they're gonna be hypothetically parking across the street on the field, walking across to the dog park side. So a crosswalk and also a speed limit sign early on as you turn on, because it's, it, it, as you go on by the condominiums, I do see that the speed is, you know, it, it does come to a dead end, but it, it's kind it's of a, a long street. It's a wide road too, and I think mm -hmm. that kind of creates an invitation to speed. Yeah. Um, one of the suggestions I would have if a crosswalk were to be implemented is if you go directly across from the entrance to the Heritage Park parking lot, you're going onto private property. So there's a wooded thin strip on the road shoulder. If you were to continue past the parking lot to Heritage Park on the right, it's, it's all wooded. You could create an access point through there so it would align correctly with the entrance to the course. Instead of going directly across to private property and then jogging right to get to the course, which is granted a very short distance, but I think a crosswalk you wanna be more direct, directly across from the parcel itself, uh, just to throw it out there if that's gonna be a um, something that's implemented. Town manager. Yeah, there were a couple things that I did uh, mention uh, to Drew, and uh, one is uh, consistent with what we had indicated that we were going to do from this point forward uh, several years ago. Um, if if this is uh, the location, then we've got to put a letter out to all of the abutters mm -hmm. to make them aware of the potential plan. Um, and I know he's on a tight timeline, but um, we did say that we were gonna send a letter out uh, in the future to any abutter so that we didn't run into a similar situation that we did years ago. Uh, secondly, um, I think it's also uh, important, and I did discuss this with Drew, to have uh, some sort of a memorandum of agreement uh, or memorandum of uh, understanding town council approved uh, with the uh, association or the league so uh, we understand what is our responsibility and they understand what their responsibility is and this is consistent with uh, other towns right. yeah. so we did have a license agreement drafted up with the town of sandwich that kind of outlined you know the uses um, and uh, management maintenance, those sorts of things. That's That was drafted by their town council. And I'm gonna supply that to all of you so you can take a look at it as a as kind of a template to work off of. That's that's the arrangement we... So, so will, will the final plan show the crosswalk, the signage that'll be in place so that the residents and the abutters would, would know where that location is? Can we put that together? Yeah. Fast enough that they can... It would be kind the of The whole a, package would be all, this is what it is. Yes. I mean, ultimately, what you have in front of you now is just a kind of highlighted area of where the course would run through. Um, it doesn't 
get specific as far as the layout of the course, like the actual holes and how that's going to be configured. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that that would be the next step. This is just a conceptual stage uh, to show the area, uh, and then the next phase would be to get a more detailed layout and all the associated. Right, I think so. that's perfect. The writer's dead on. I said you, yeah. right up. Everybody knows what what you're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Michaela, thank you. Um, I've also, in keeping with what Carol was saying, have received emails of concern, sure. and there are people who walk and bike in the area. So I think if we put the speed signs, if we could allay some of those concerns with the crosswalk, I, I think that would be really helpful. Anyone else uh, have a question? I'd like to ask Brian Everett to come up. He had held off on his question uh, from public comment specific to this matter. Thank you, members of the select board. I appreciate this opportunity. On 2016, the last time a disc golf course was proposed, $18,000 was requested by the Recreation Department for the construction of the disc golf course. The proposal was indefinitely postponed by the selectmen. Prior, go prior to going to town meeting, there were a few legitimate concerns raised by the selectmen that I still haven't, I don't think have been addressed tonight for this project. Number one, using Mashpee taxpayer funds for a similar project that can be taken advantage of by visitors or out-of-towners similar to creating a tragedy of the commons. Number two, no oversight on revenue raised by membership fees or tournaments by the Disc Golf Club. Number three, parking that's been brought up tonight. One additional concern that was not heavily calculated into the proposal was the environmental impact of the creation of the course. In Sandwich, with a Disc Golf Course, club can, obtained $50,000 in CPA funds to construct their course on 48 acres of land. Approximately 100 trees were removed. I find it extremely disappointing that the one person in charge of protecting our upland natural areas is proposing to do this with our fragile taxpayer-owned open space. I'd also like to know how we went from $18,000 six years ago to $200,000 today. Thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any further questions? Uh, uh, no, I just, you know, valid, valid points by the, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, at the same time, I, um, not to say we, on a public comment, normally we don't respond, but just to, uh, one, one of those comments was, you know, other towns people can benefit from a disc golf course, uh, no different than, you know, playgrounds, basketball courts, and every other court. I think the majority of the usage will be Ashby residents, just like pickleball courts. Um, but there's a lot of people that play from surrounding towns as well. And I, I think that's, you know, you know, my supporters, I'm a little biased because I'm encouraged to, you know, if I can get outdoors and encourage kids to get outdoors, uh, anybody to get outdoors and enjoy activity, um, I'm, I'm for it, so. Um, you know, I appreciate that, because, you know, this is something that I was completely unfamiliar with and um, also have a struggle with understanding <laughs> uh, the concept, and, um, you know, so I, I, I struggle with it myself. Um, especially with the price tag and, you know, hearing Mr. McKelvey's um, presentation earlier that, you know, we have to make choices, there's wants and there's needs, and, you know, prioritizing those things um, is something that I struggle with, you know, in, in, in um, projects like this. Um, but <clears throat> if there's no other further discussion, um, we will put it to a vote. We've heard a lot of information on it. and. Um, well, we're presenting it to the voters, and we'll let the voters Correct. decide. Correct. That's, that's what we're doing. So I guess I'd accept a motion to approve um, the submittal to, or, I mean, what was the initial request? It was looking for an endorsement of the location. Yeah, this would just for authorize the use of the land. For consideration for town meeting. 
Correct. Yes, this would just authorize the use of the land by the board. Correct. Uh, obviously, this is not the final, final. Right. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. Hearing a first and second, any discussion on um, the motion as stated? Hearing none, Michaela? Yes. Yes. Tom? Yes. Uh, yes. Carol? Yes. Uh, I'm going to be a no. But uh, the motion passes. Um, four in favor, one opposed, and uh, good luck. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh, <clears throat> new business. Update on fiscal year 2024 budget, town manager. Yes, Mr. Chair uh, and board members. Um, what you're going to receive um, is the uh, preliminary operating budget. I can give you some highlights from it. The town increase is 3.1%. Uh, the school increase is 4.1% for a total of 3.4%. Uh, the reductions that I recommend come to just under a million dollars. Um, I can say that uh, this budget does add full-time personnel to the library. Um, not necessarily to the bottom line, but it will impact benefits uh, if this uh, goes through. Um, I carefully considered uh, the options, and right now um, they're having a difficult time staffing with part-time personnel. So basically, we're taking part-time <laughs> personnel and deducting it from the budget while adding uh, personnel uh, full-time. You will see that uh, the, the bottom line is not really much of a difference, but there is a difference in regards to benefits if the p positions are ultimately approved at town meeting. Okay. Um, and it will require uh, town meeting approval because uh, it does establish new positions. Um, as far as uh, the insurance is concerned, uh, we're budgeted at uh, 10%. I'm hoping that uh, that comes in a little less. It has in the past. So that would obviously be a savings. Uh, I have not received uh, the breakdown of the cherry sheet to know where we're going to be in terms of state aid. So that's an unknown. Uh, Cape Cod Tech at 22%, I believe, is high. But nevertheless, um, that is what we were initially faced with. Um, and essentially, um, what this budget uh, results in is um, keeping expenses at level pace. There were some minor adjustments. I know that you're going to see a couple that look like um, they're massive increases. Uh, Percentage-wise, they are. Dollars and cents-wise, they're really not. Um, in terms of... Um, <laughs> personnel, I've given you the highlights there. There are two other part-time positions that are within this budget uh, that I decided to leave in. One was uh, a part-time position in my office for a grants administrator, believe it or not, and uh, a person uh, that will uh, assist staff um, in uh, the processing of the things that we do on a daily basis that I'll be more than happy to expand upon. Um, this position has been sought for several years and has been denied uh, by me. Um, but now I realize that uh, the time has come. And the same for accounting. I think with what we're going to be dealing with in, in terms of uh, wastewater and some other uh, anticipated activities, um, accounting uh, really needs uh, a part-time person added. Mm -hmm. And they've been seeking one for a while, and I've been denying those as well. So this is uh, the year where I did say yes to those, at least at this point. 
And uh, like always, if uh, any board member has a question or uh, any comments, uh, you know how to find me. Mm -hmm. um, I can also uh, tell you that our, our CIP uh, review starts on Monday. Yes, sir. And, and uh, that's Monday and Tuesday. Um, I know that um, there is a, a big ticket item coming in as far as the HVAC system. For the school? Uh, yes, with the school. And uh, I think uh, we're going to have to make a uh, critical decision in terms of uh, what the chair was referring to earlier, and that's the priorities. Um, my humble opinion is we can't do it all, so we've got to collectively decide, or I should say you need to collectively decide uh, what direction you want us to uh, pursue, and obviously we're going to uh, follow what you instruct, but um, I, am, I am a little concerned if we get into uh, too much uh, in regards to CIP and we get into uh, debt exclusions, then uh, where are we going to be in terms of uh, wastewater, et cetera? So uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying uh, we're going to go this way or that way. What I'm saying is uh, I think we've got some, uh, I think the reference earlier was uh, it's a heavy lift. Well, this is a heavy lift. This uh, budget challenge that we have coming up. And just to prepare you, I mean, obviously, uh, we've got uh, the uh, collective bargaining agreements, which should all be ready for May of uh, 2023. Um, however, um, I think it's fair to say that we could be looking at a potential override uh, in July of uh, 2025 in order to sustain uh, our operating uh, costs. Because when it all adds up with the staffing and uh, where we're at currently, uh, I think a few years ago we had projected, what was it, 2023? Yes, sir. Yeah. We were going to probably need a potential override. Um, so we've kind of extended it, and uh, we know that we can get through this one, but uh, in terms of uh, the, the long-term sustainability, I do think an override is uh, coming in 25, uh, the 25 budget, or we will be looking at uh, some other consequences. Is there um, a lot on the plate of CIP? Um, I didn't bring my CIP book, um, but um, the, in terms of dollars and cents, yes. Okay. Which, which was, if I'm correct, it was three AC, AC updates, all three schools, mm -hmm. all now? Was, that's, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, I'm going to let the, the school present <clears throat> it, um, so I don't want to. So we'll, speak I'll hear that, that at the meeting, because okay. just so the board's aware, that we did um, at our last meeting they did talk about adding air conditioning to the schools, but um, I thought when we left that last meeting, um, the thought was one school at a time. Year at a time, if if we can accommodate it, um, not all three schools taking a bite of three schools at once, because that cost is. Do a majority of the schools have air conditioning now? Nothing, right? That's I believe I don't think anything does. In None of the schools. Certain areas do. In the school. A couple. I mean, oh, you mean, I mean here on the, our on existing the Cape. buildings? On the yes. Cape. Oh, on the oh. I know in certain areas, like uh, in the administration area. No, he's, the she's talking about all, all schools. I, I don't know. I, don't I, I really I'm don't just know. curious because, I mean, you need air conditioning What in the beginning, maybe two or three weeks in the beginning of the school year. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hear you, and trust me, I, 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 but I'll tell you that's it's- a big, That's a big, that's it's, a big- It's a big expense, and that's why I'm saying, I don't think the town can afford, in my opinion, and again, the, you know, the, the people can speak at town meeting as well, um, but in my opinion, three upgrades in three schools in one year, I think that's, that's I mean, straight up is there, uh, is there, has there been kind of a cost comparison as to, you know, I assume the new units, once they're put in, they'll be much more energy efficient than whatever's on there. You know, have we looked at what kind of money they'll save in the long term? Uh, once installed? I know that we've like done that. a lot of energy saving adjustments already, and I think that's part of the of the uh, of the challenge in seeing future savings. But I think that there is an air quality component that I want to make this uh, right. or, or enable the school to present to you, and I don't want to speak for them. Um, I'm, I'm just saying that in regards to all of these costs, you know, in terms of maintaining our current staff, maintaining uh, a very progressive CIP, and maintaining your uh, direction in regards to wastewater and water quality. I'm not pitting one against the other, but well, I just don't think choices. we can do everything without choices. the taxpayers uh, feeling a very heavy pinch. So um, I think uh, we need to just make some tough decisions and um, whatever they may be. Um, obviously, um, I'm going to listen to my board and I'm going to see what they say at town meeting with whatever you bring for a warrant. Is the, I guess the reason why I was asking that is, you know, if there was any kind of assessment like that done, then it might um, help make an argument for any kind of funding, grant funding that uh, was eligible for energy efficiency. Um, I can say, David, that we have done all the energy savings that we could possibly fathom. I mean, through, through a Cape Light Camp Compact and others, uh, along with solar and things of that nature. And if we're putting in the air conditioning, we're actually adding yeah. energy. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, there's gonna, a cost to that as well. But I agree with the manager. They'll make their presentation. I mean. Okay. When are they coming in to make their uh, that'll presentation? That'll be the 30th. I'm almost, 30th. Cer okay. almost certain. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, in fairness, um, I went over there. Uh, when was it? Um, Wednesday. Last, last fall. Oh. And, and you don't like heat, so. No. Um, so you're I don't. a good example. And they brought me over there on the right day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And it was so unbearable. I mean, I don't see how anybody can function in a room that's 80 degrees plus, whether it be a teacher or a student. Um, it was terrible. That was in the general space or? It, that was in a classroom, sir. Area, really? Now, they did invite me over on the right day, no. but um, nevertheless. No, guess, my daughter's experienced, and that, I, oh, I it, had, it was If you're a child, you're going to school, and, and it, you get one of those, those, those heat waves in September, and it happens, and for some reason, the school seems to, I get it, so I, I, I'm on that side, but at the same time, and there is an added benefit for the ventilation, and clean air, which under with COVID and all that, I get all that. But like I said, all three at one time, I, it's I, gonna be hard to I don't know how that's, I, I, I can't see coming, getting, being okay with that in my mind. But that's just, again, my opinion. Okay. Any questions on the budget is, pre is presented? We'll have to digest it. Yeah. Yeah. And what I will be doing is I'll give you a, a more detailed breakdown. Um, there was a lot of rushing around today because obviously uh, you needed this for tonight. And when do you present it to the finance? Thursday. Probably Thursday night. Thursday night. 
Um, but I wasn't going to present it to them without seeing you first. Okay. So, um, but I'll give you a more uh, of a detailed breakdown so that uh, you can look that over in case you have any questions or comments. A couple of years down the road, we're going to spend an awful lot of money very quickly, aren't we? I mean, now we're talking waste, um, wastewater, collection system, and now schools, um, and uh, it's, the list just keeps going up and up and up. And just the increase of doing daily business, right? That's when I mean, that's when you, you have to make a choice. Not for retirees, not daily business. That's when you make choices. <clears throat> yeah. Of course. Oh, uh, yeah, so get your questions together, I guess. Um, next item, uh, additional topics. Uh, liaison reports. I have. Um, I had a meeting with the Human Service Committee, and um, she had the president of St. Vincent de Paul Society come in to give an update on the food pantry, and there's an awful lot of increase um, with people coming to receive help, and the food pantry is not stocked so well. I mean, it's stocked, but it, it gets depleted very fast with the increase. Um, then also, um, the Mashpee Chamber um, our executive director, Julie Schultz, um, we're having our annual meeting and dinner March 23rd, 5.30 at the club at New Seabury. Um, they're seeking nominations for Citizen of the Year and Unsung Heroes, and you can nominate them on the um, website. And they're announcing their new logo at that meeting, but it's already been out. <laughs> and people are looking at it. It's done did, very nice. They did a nice job. They did that. a nice job. Yeah, very nice. Yep. And they're seeking advertisements and stories for their Mashpee magazine. And that's all I have. Anyone else Good. have these on the ports? Um, water, water quality updates. Um, I would like to convene in future um, coming meetings, uh, have joint meetings, start setting those up. We really haven't done a whole lot, um, you know, giving thought to Michaela's uh, call to action. Um, you know, I, I think it would be prudent to start convening some of those uh, sessions, joint meetings, uh, moving forward in between our regularly scheduled meetings, maybe like once a month uh, would be good, uh, just to kind of see and, and monitor, monitor um, how things are progressing with some of the articles that we, uh, you know, <clears throat> were anticipating for this meeting, this Maytown meeting, and you know, um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot. So, what are we doing? How can we? What can we kind of contribute to what they're working on to try to um, progress water quality initiatives, and um, you know, start having some robust discussion around um, ways in which to take some corrective actions uh who would you like invited in first uh do we want joint meeting with everyone present or like multiple or, or just one at a time i mean which um, would i think i think it would be helpful once you once we've thought through an agenda to bring together multiple groups which in, kind of ensures people are on the same page you get divergent points of view but people come together that would be that would be my recommendation okay I'm, I'm missing out on, what, what, what am I missing? On water quality, what, do, what are you looking to discuss, water quality? Water quality issues, there were some articles that were pulled at the last town meeting. Uh, the department directors uh, decided to pull them. They were gonna work on them. I think they have been working on them, but they're not ready for town meeting. They're not ready to put them forward to us for consideration at this point. So, you know, how, how are they progressing? I'd like to get an update on that and to better understand how so they're moving forward. Are we talking about drinking potable water, water drinking or wastewater? What, what issue is it that you're looking to get answers <clears throat> to? Water quality in general, I, I don't think drinking water was one of them. I mean, uh, that I'm You're just talking of. about ponds, rivers, yeah. bays, estuaries? Correct. Well, can I make a suggestion? 
Um, I personally, I, I agree with bringing everybody in. Yeah. Um, but um, my suggestion would be actually Board of Health to start off. And the we, reason is... We haven't, yeah. Um, he's a new director. I, I personally have not met him. Um, in addition to him coming in, um, there would be, I would love to find out if the findings are um, an update on the number of cesspools in Mashpee, <laughs> which was a survey given. Yeah, I know. You look at me. Yeah, I, I, you I, knew it was coming. It was I coming. knew it was coming. And, and I'm glad I mean, it is. I'm and glad. this is probably, like, you probably remember, it's probably a year and a half ago. It was a year and a half. It, maybe it was two years ago when I started this. Yeah. Um, but maybe we can get an update on cesspools. We can get an update from the state, what's going on with the Title Fives. Well, the next, the, they're doing a meeting. They've extended it till January 30th for DEP. So maybe in our February meeting, we could have the Board of Health to come in for February but to he give can, us their update and plus the new findings with DEP. Because there's a, there's a lot just from there's the Board of Health. There's a lot to it. And I think from that meeting, I think it will engage more conservation and it it'll draw everything the others because in. everything else is not going to be until October but there's a lot of updates to that I personally and I think the board needs from the board of health and it's a new department head, so if I may I believe you're talking about not doing this to have the board of health come in at one of our meetings you're talking about a larger kind of joint meeting. Correct. Where I was, you're doing what? I'm sorry, I mean to interrupt. No, but you're fine. going to discuss all of the aspects of water quality, like the overlap between what Ray Jack is finding and what's happening in the Board of Health. How do people come together and see the issues, and how are you moving forward? I, I think that's what you were suggesting. That's what I envisioned. I think it would be good to have the Board of Health come in, like you said, a new, a new staff member, have them come in, introduce themselves, uh, get an update on the status of that. I think they were also supposed to, um, who would be responsible for the update? I, the base was also looking at uh, the rivers uh, for the PFOS, but then they were gonna start looking at the ponds for PFOS. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'd like to get follow up on. Um, you know, that they, maybe they could come in to attend a regularly scheduled uh, select board meeting. But convening, you know, multiple departments and pro programs for, for kind of just discussion mm -hmm. on how I to did, move I forward. I did that, um, something that three I, years I'd like ago. To and um, you need one night just for that. That's Be fine. Because that's right. you bring all the department heads in to sit around and talk. You just need one night just for that. That's David. what I'm speaking of yeah. between uh, regularly scheduled meetings. Scheduled meeting. Uh, because um, it, what we did is we didn't open it for discussion with, with the audience, but the audience could attend and listen to what we all brought to the table. It would be difficult to have the whole audience in well, the discussion. Well, you can't have yeah, them asking, no. no it's, it was too hard. So, I mean, I'd like to have discussion amongst the, the, the relevant members. parties at yeah. the table. It um, was good. It was informative. We, did, we started our talks on wastewater. <laughs> So if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, what I suggest is a workshop session with the select board and whoever else you may want, a board committee commission, and we will make sure that it's uh, properly posted on a date that, uh, and we'll check with you in regards to the dates just to make sure that there's no conflicts. Um, and it would also be a date that uh, isn't a conflict for the at least the majority of, uh, or some of the significant uh, individuals on these other boards. So, um, uh, conservation, planning, natural resources, board of health. Uh, so you right. want planning, um, health, conservation, conservation. But can we have the board of health come in at and our prior to minute? sure? Yeah, yeah. before. Uh, we do that. I just want to be clear. Do you want the Board of Health in separately? Pro, prior to, to introduce himself and kind of give a status update on okay. uh, the, the, what John was speaking to, you, you know, um, assessments on. Um, you, has you, that number changed? I mean, last I knew it was 59 oh, they didn't have. They didn't know any. No, um, we didn't have well, they only That were within a 100-foot buffer. Yeah, but they only looked at both 6% of the town. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It was... 
Yeah, that was scary. So that number could change. So yeah, an update on that would be helpful. And so if we so can, when, so, so we can let, have let the board of health next meeting, and then all right. So if you can come in with proposal for a joint meeting at our next meeting. Well, I, if I could, sure. you want board of health in at a regular meeting. Regular meeting. So this would be probably the next meeting. Next meeting would be great. Okay, and then the joint meeting with the others to be determined. To be determined, and I'll have somebody reach out to you if it's not myself. That, that sounds good. Perfect. If I could just ask one thing, though, if uh, when you're doing this big meeting, is you might want to have the board to get together and set up some type of agenda so that we know what you want them in to discuss and Focus. not be all over the place. Yeah, we right. can't so, do that now. So That's I guess why. the homework is, right. you know, come back with some questions <laughs> exactly. to contribute towards, yeah. uh, 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 you know, working agenda. Um, towards that meeting uh, that's yet to be determined. And that's a great thing for us. Um, if you could individually come up with agenda items to be discussed at the next meeting, and then we'll have an agenda for the, your joint meeting, uh, whoever that may involve. And right now it looks like planning, health, and conservation, and whoever else you want. The joint so meetings if we, if that I did, David, I did, um, the first one was wastewater. And that was, it, that took the whole night. So the second one was housing and economic development. Those were the three basic agenda items that, titles that we used. Well, what if we come up all, if we all come up with topic items, yeah. We can discuss that at the next meeting. Uh, I ask uh, the, the board to, you know, the homework to go home. We heard the different department heads that we've, we're considering asking come forward. If you come up with a few questions for each uh, or topic areas for each department, break it out that way so that they know we can inform them and they're prepared and they to, to come to and speak to uh, when, when, when they are brought before us and we convene a joint meeting. And, and if I could, Mr. Chair, what I would appreciate is um, if you prepare these issues or uh, questions uh, and, and we discuss them at your next meeting, then instead of uh, wasting everybody's time, I can take those questions and give them to staff and staff comes in with the answers for you. It'll be a much more productive it meeting. It would be, actually. in my opinion, a much more productive meeting than us having to get them to come back. So uh, we'll be more than happy uh, to make sure that we're the conduit to the uh, staff and then they're coming in at a specific uh, date and they'll have answers. And we're looking for solutions ultimately. So, you know, if you have any ideas towards solutions that would be helpful to see, yeah. have them I'm, vetted out as well. <clears throat> and I'm looking at cost. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because it's not going down cost. anything. And anything that remove, that needs further treatment, the cost is gonna go up. Whether it be new air conditioners, new wastewater, it's just, it's, the cost is going up. Not that there's anything you can do to stop it, it's gonna continue. Um, I I have one. I have one thing, Michaela. Um, just so people are aware, um, Cape Cod Commission. There's the Cape Cod Water Protection Collaborative. Um, Mashby has a vacancy. Um, the role is of that collaborative is to offer a coordinated approach to enhance water and wastewater management, um, and they seek funding from the Cape Cod Commission. So that's still vacant. Um, everybody else has. The seats are filled with the exception of uh, Mashby and Provincetown, so we need somebody on there. I would okay. Think. Um, is that posted? Um, or can we post it in the. We can. It? Thank you. Um, town manager updates. Uh, very quickly, uh, the SRF loan agreements have been signed at 0%. Uh, town auction is going live this week. Uh, town meeting articles are due Monday, February 13th by 4.30 p.m. Uh, obviously, the fiscal year 24 CIP hearing starts on Monday, January 30th. I think it's just Monday and Tuesday. Yes, right? it is. Yep. 
and uh, the town has completed all the tasks relative to the cell tower. Uh, and that's it. Thanks. Good. Uh, nothing for executive. Uh, I take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved. So move here is first and second. Um, aye. All those aye. in favor? Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>